Greetings. It is I, Hobo Yeti, uh, coming to you from Portland still, um, heading out in a couple of days, and I thought I'd get some videos taken care of that I've been wanting to do for quite some time, um, and then just get them done, uh, because I, I feel like I really need to put some miles uh, as soon as I start on Thursday, or Wednesday, or Tuesday. I just want to get going. Um, but today I want to talk to you about uh, beast, the, the bestiary of being on the road. There are a lot of um, there are a lot of things. There, there are dangers that you really need to be cognizant of. You know, a lot of times when I'm outside my tent, I'm doing a video. Uh, you'll see me looking around a lot. It, it's it's being wary and being aware of what's going on around you. Um, so the first thing I'd like to talk about, though, is insects. Those are the most pervasive uh, uh, dangers or potentially dangerous uh, creatures. Um, mosquitoes, I, I tend to draw, like, I can be, that's what, one of the reasons I have a tent. I have a tent because uh, bugs are drawn to me. I, I think I have sweet blood. Uh, I think that's it. I've, I've tried things like, uh, like having a dryer sheet or something like that. That doesn't work for me. Um, uh, bug spray works, but, uh, go through a lot of that. So I tried just to, uh, to dress appropriately for whatever, try to stay clean. Uh, sometimes I can't stay clean. And what I'll do is I'll put a, a, a bandana on my head and what that does. And, and, um, most people don't know this, but basically when you put a bandana on your head like this, uh, yeah, it looks cool and hippified and whatnot, but also, uh, it's a way of um, keeping the bugs away from your head, from your hair. Because when, when it starts getting, you know, a lot of salt and sweat and all that crap in there, uh, the bugs are attracted to it. And so you'll be walking down the road and they'll just be dive bombing you. I also have a bug net for my head, um, just in case that comes about. I'm trying to do things a little bit different this walk. Uh, trying to walk, uh, trying to stay clean uh, as much as possible. Uh, not just using wipes, but actually doing a hobo bath um, and stuff like that. So um, flying insects, hornets, bees, uh, house flies, sometimes will land on you and bite you, uh, believe it or not. Um, so there's that. You just, you know, you just got to kind of, like I said, staying clean is a big part of that. Just going to keep a lot of that stuff away. Uh, as far as mosquitoes, you just, there's certain times of the day, like uh, typically right when it, right about uh, twilight or uh, yeah, right about twilight or just before sunset, they, they come out and they do the same thing in the morning. So you want to avoid uh, those times, either get it before then or, you know, whatever. Um, spiders. Uh, I haven't really, I try to be just careful, you know, uh, cognizant, aware. Um, but I, I remember I was under a bridge in Louisiana. I got bit by a spider and it made my entire lower lips swole up really big. <laughs> And, uh, I was just freaking out, you know, I had, I had like the, the, you know, you can tell a spider bite cause it's got like a triangle bite marks, three spider bites. Um, but I, I guess, I don't know what happened, but it, it got all numb and so I couldn't tell. I was like, <laughs> um, but that's why with, in my medical, in my med kit or my pills and things, I have, uh, like Benadryl or generic Benadryl, right? Because and so I took one of those or two of those, and it really it took care of the situation. By the end of the day, I could talk without blah 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 blues. Um, the spiders, you know, you got to be careful. Of those chiggers are terrible. Sand sand mites, chiggers, whatever you want to call them. I think they're two separate species of things. But uh, chiggers are horrible. They get on they get under your skin and they burrow and stuff. So the best, you know. Like right now, I'm wearing pants because uh, it's still cold out. But when I start wearing shorts, like I'm, I have like, I have inner uh, sock inserts, and I have sock, uh, like you know, they're like uh, half socks, you know, whatever you call it, ankle socks or whatever. And and uh, I also have regular socks. So I'll pull them up uh, up to up my calves, even though it looks stupid. Uh, I'll do that because I don't I don't want to deal with any of you know, like sometimes. You bugs will be sitting on plants and when you walk through the grass or whatever they'll they'll attach to you um so chiggers uh, i got a real bad infestation not not on the road i had just finished being on the road 
and I guess I sat on a nest of them or something. I don't know. But I, I got infected. Uh, I, I had a, a, a... Well, I don't really want to talk about it, but it was, it was bad. Um, it took like two weeks to go away, but it was very itchy, scratchy, whatever. Ticks. Got to look out for ticks. I haven't really... Knock on whatever this is. I haven't really had a problem with ticks. Um, but ticks, you know, basically... Uh, I've got a, uh, on one of my keychains, I've got like a, a, a tick key to help pull the ticks out. Um, it's really just being aware of your body and kind of cleaning yourself regularly uh, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but ticks, you know, you can get Lyme disease. I know some some folks that were walking across the country in 2015, same time I was, uh, and one of them got Lyme disease. And the key is like, if, if there's a tick, uh, I think you have like 24 hours to 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 remove it uh, before you have the potential of getting Lyme disease. Fleas, fleas just happen. You know, I mean, fleas are in the wild. They're not just on your dogs. Uh, and But, uh, you know, I haven't really have any, had an issue with that. Lice, I haven't had an issue with. Um, but those are all the insects that, you know, uh, you know, you know, you just got to be careful, be aware. My, I have a rule, though, with, with, all kinds of creatures uh you know i'm a live and let live kind of guy but if they're around my tent or in my tent or close to my stuff then they, they get instant death because you know you know a spider climbing on your tent or whatever um brown recluse or whatever i don't know uh i don't want anything like that near me so you know or if a or if a normally like if i was sitting on a park bench and a bee came up i know i'm supposed to be bee friendly because we need bees, right? But, uh, you know, if it's just bothering me, you know, um, I wouldn't normally bother with it. But if I'm sitting in my campsite and it's constantly coming around, it's dead. Um, so that's the insects. Now for the mammals or, or things like that. Um, when I was going through, um, when I was going through Florida in 2015, I encountered some alligators. And when I say encountered, I didn't really encounter them, but, uh, I, you know, I remember looking through like a little area and saw a big mud hole and saw this huge alligator, man, uh, like 15 foot or something. And it was, I was just like, wow, okay. I got to be careful where I put my tent. Right. And so I, what, what I did was I, uh, would go uphill, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if alligators go uphill. I guess they would, but would they? You know, if there's like a very steep hill or something, are they going to go uphill? I don't know. I've never heard of an alligator attacking somebody at the top of a hill when it have to. I don't know. But you know, things to be aware of. Um, let's see. Uh, dogs, wild dogs. Uh, in a, in a lot of country or rural areas, they tend to run in packs a lot of times. Uh, I had this one. I was walking through this area. This guy was on the front porch uh, of his house, and I guess these were his dogs. And I'm walking right past my cart, and, like, there's, like, six dogs, like, trailing me and barking and, and growling. And uh, I had this uh, this bar or whatever that I had kept just in case I had encountered something like this. And one of the, the Rottweiler jumped at me, and I swung it, and then it, it, it was like, okay, I'm not going to mess with this guy anymore. But, um... You know, you got to be careful about dogs. Uh, I don't carry bug sp uh, bear spray. Um, I did on the 2015 journey. I never used it. The thing is, is um, I've seen like videos of people spare, uh, sp spray the bug spray or the, the bear spray. The, and, uh, you know, nothing happens. The, the bear's like, huh, whatever. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I'm going to, am I going to have it in, am I going to have it in my holster and ready to go? Um, you know, more than likely I'm going to be sitting down tired and it's going to, you know, whatever. Uh, but, but bears are another concern. Um, you know, uh, not as much, I don't think. Uh, although I will say that, uh, when they post like maps of where bears are and where different wildlife is, it's not always accurate. Like for instance, uh, cougars are, are not supposed to be in the, the Eastern United States at all. They're supposed to be, I mean... They're supposed to be like extinct uh, or not populous, uh, I guess, east of Kansas or something. But they are, trust me. Uh, boars, boars are scary. Um, I remember I was in uh, Louisiana. I was 
or maybe it's Mississippi. I don't know. Anyway, I was going on this country road, which I, you know, that's one of the reasons I don't do country roads. But I was looking down this ditch and through a little opening in the woods. And there was this boar. It was a big black boar. And there were some little ones around it. But it was the size of a pony, man. This thing was huge. And, you know, the thing the thing about boars is you have to, yeah, just stay away from them. I mean, they're, they're just, you know, <laughs> you know, I... I didn't, you know, I saw that and I just kept on walking and I'm like, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. And put some miles between me and that. But, you know, if you go to the side of the road, you see like the, the, that the ground is like rooted up, it's dug up and stuff like that. That that's usually, um, cause boars usually travel in herds or packs or whatever they call them. And they'll dig up an entire area and leave it. So, uh, something to be aware of. I mean, in Florida, you also have, uh, the Florida Panther. Uh, I never did see any. Um, and you got Florida bears in the swamps and whatnot. Um, but, uh, snakes, um, snakes are everywhere. You see them dead on the side of the road. I, you know, in fact, I saw this one, it was like, it was like erect on the side of the road and it was just, you know, and I thought it was just, I was like, that's gotta be just like a piece of rubber from one of the trucks or something. And as I got close to it, it just, took off and i was like wow that's but you see a lot of water moccasins water moccasins by the way is a slang for um a water snake it doesn't it's not a specific kind of snake but there are snakes like uh, um uh, i can't think right now cotton mouth those things will chase you man they'll don't chase after you i saw one on the side of the road just started coming after me i was like what the heck um but most of the time, they're most most snakes are going to get out of your way. They're going to hear you coming. They're 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 going to want to stay away from you. Um, I've seen you know, I tr- you know, I carry a, a cart, and so um, you know, I, awareness is a big thing. But also, you know, they they hear your vibrations and things. So a lot of times, they're going to try to get out of your way. Um, but mainly, it's just awareness. Uh, I'm not, I don't have great hearing, so I'm kind of worried about that, but, you know, so if there's a rat, rattlesnake or something, but, uh, you know, I just try to be aware, um, because there are poisonous snakes out there, and that's another reason I love my tent, I don't have to worry about an uninvited visitor, um, let's see, puma, okay, so I was walking in Texas, uh, it was North Texas, it was, uh, uh, just south of Sherman or whatever, uh, northern east, northeastern Texas. And I was walking there and I counted a puma, and I mean that's a story in and of itself. Encountered one, um, but uh, you know, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I can't be. Yes, it is. And you know, because as soon as you see it, it's kind of like when I was in Nashville, I saw a coyote, which was in this little strip of land between a Walmart and a strip mall, right? And I was like away but once you see a coyote you're like there's no way you could ever going forward ever in the future like be like that was just a regular dog no because it looks like coyote uh same with a, a cougar puma catamount i prefer the word puma um but uh you know when you see a a, a cougar i mean there's n- there's no way you could ever think oh that's just a kitty cat or a bobcat or a lynx or whatever it's a, it's a it's a cougar you know and so, and like on their website, the, the National Federation uh, Refuge, whatever, they are like, well, there, there are none uh, east of blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, well, this is, this is wrong then, right? And yeah, there were a lot of flash floods uh, that year. Um, so that could have uh, pushed it out of its natural environment. Although there was a wildlife refuge, refuge nearby. But, you know... It's, it's something that, uh, um, to be cognizant of, you know, and I guess the, you know, I think that's all the animals that I've encountered to some extent or another, uh, there, there's just one more animal and that's the human animal that you got to worry about. Uh, there was a time in Florida where I was walking after dark and it, there, it was, there was like a, on either side of the road, there was canals and ditches. And um, there was like no shoulder, so I was walking on the side of the road trying to get to this camp spot that was way up the road because, uh, you know, I had gotten, I went to one camp spot and it was closed. And they say, well, you can go to the other one. It's just up the street. 
just up the street ended up being 13 miles away and it was already six o'clock but i was like i don't have anywhere else to go which i should have just found a little spot and took you know whatever did a self camp but i wanted something to really rest uh but ended up going this long way there and on the way there um you know these these kids they were in their pickups and they were they would come at me and like head straight for me and then swerve at the last minute thinking oh this is fun let's play with the hobo you know and so um the human animal um you know um you know i, I encountered you know cops that weren't weren't so cool there's just one sheriff in, in in florida that uh was playing a little joke on me he's like yeah you can go up the road to this campsite and the campsite ended up being a campsite place but it was also a pickup spot for a certain lifestyle choice uh and it was very you know i had to go really back into the bush for that um because i like i said i don't like people knowing where i sleep um that's just it. I, I want to go in there effortlessly and go out. But people, um, got to be aware of people, you know. Uh, staying connected is a big part of, uh, uh, you know. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, on, on that first walk, I had a 360 app, Life360, which my mom was, like, following my progress. And I was like, well, what's the point of this? Are we just going to – is this going to be, like, if I'm not found, if I stay in the same spot for – however long you're just going to know where to find the body. I mean, um, not to be mean, but you know, I mean, true story, you know, but you got to be careful of people. Uh, people are, uh, people can be horrible for the most part though. Uh, the people you meet on the road are just really cool. Uh, because you know, a lot of people, it's kind of like when you see a homeless person there, they, they see you and they're like, they, they look away. Uh, but there are some people that, uh, look at you with uh, either compassion or they're like, you know, they see you as a person. And so uh, there's a lot of that on the road. Uh, you see more of that because you're uh, you're kind of at a lower echelon of, of life uh, and spending a lot of time in that. But uh, that's my bestiary of the road. Um, I'll be heading out probably... Uh, day after tomorrow or let's see today's monday i'll be off tuesday or bleh, i'll be off <laughs> like i'm working yes but i I'm, I'm i'm starting to get the itch to really head out on the road i'm like done with this uh let's sit in one spot all day and but tonight's going to be another night of like 26 degrees and i want to get through that and uh so tomorrow uh we'll get through that through that today and then that'll be tuesday and then i'll either head out Wednesday or Thursday. Thursday it promises to be a very beautiful day, so I might just wait for that. You know, uh, kick off my my walk officially on a, a really good note. Anyway, Hobo Yeti signing off. <laughs>